All right. So look, I understand that, you know, drag detectors were added to prevent people from having to make their own custom drags. But if you, you know, ha had a drag system, you know, which worked amazing. Um, but, you know, now we have drag detectors. M maybe, maybe you're working on some game that uses drag detectors. Listen, you actually are able to make these effectively custom. Effectively, you're able to, you know, like have these do like custom drags, right? And the reason you would use a drag detector over than like creating a new script is because a drag detector will give you all of the events of like when someone starts touching a part, when someone begins dragging the part, and then when someone stops like, you know, clicking on the part, right? And the way you do this, um, actually, so yeah, so first let's actually make a part, right? And then I'll add the drag detector inside. And normally what would happen, just if I, you know, don't change anything, is that I'm able to, you know, drag it like this. There we go. And it changes on the server as well, I believe. So if I drag this over here. Yeah, so then it replicates to, to the server as well. So that's that's nice. But then if I go to the drag detector, right, and then I say run locally. So I, I you know, <laughs> do this checkbox. Um, and then I try dragging it and it does nothing, okay? So on the server, on the client, does nothing. And the reason it does nothing is because what this drag detector is now doing is it's firing events uh, to clients. So let me show you. If I make a local script or right now, right? And then I just make a variable for the detector. So local drag equals uh, workspace, wait for child part, wait for child, drag detector. How these, how these things work is that a drag will have... Um, I believe three events. I think it's drag start. Yeah. Yeah. Drag start connect function, which gives you the player who drag. Um, and then you have drag, drag continue. And then you have drag end, right? And so what we can do here is we could just print something like start print dragged then prints end, right? And then, so what's gonna happen here is that when I'm actually here, right? When I you know begin, my mouse isn't working. There we go, okay. Yeah, so as you can see, locally now, right? It, it's firing the events to our client. So it knows when I start holding, it knows when I'm like dragging my mouse around, and then it knows when I stop holding, right? And so, using this, you're able to script your own drags, right? Because it doesn't just give you the player, it gives you the actual ray, I believe, from the mouse to the part. It gives you the view frame, which is, I believe, the position of the player, like of the player's camera. Hit frame, which I believe is where the, the player actually hits the part. The part that, you know, is clicked. Something, something VR. Is mode switch key down? So I believe, like, um, drag detectors have a property called, like, a switch key. Let me check. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, something, I think, keyboard, yeah, so yeah, so mode switch key code. So this is for gamepad, this is for keyboard, this is for Wii VR. So when, like, these buttons are held, that's considered to be, um, like, like, a, like, like a mode switch key. So let's say you're dragging a part, and then as you're dragging, if, so, if, like, the player holds left control, the drag might become different, right? So, so you're able to script that as well, right? Um, so yeah, you have all of these functionalities, right? So, so for example, right, for example, what I, what I could do is I could say part, uh, oh, wait, no, hold on, uh, <laughs> workspace, wait for child part dot transparency is equal to zero. Okay. And then I could say workspace, wait for child part. I'm just showing you this as an example, right? Transparency is equal to math. Ran actually, I don't think math.random would work here. Actually, no, wait. 1 to 100. And then let's just do um, divided by 100. Yeah, there we go. And then here we could say, okay, workspace, which are child part, dot transparency equals zero. And let's make this one. So... This is just an example of what a part can do. So if I start, oh, my mouse is, okay. 
Yeah, start holding. Yeah, and as you can see, as I'm dragging, it gives it a random transparency, like so. Then when I finish, it goes back. There we go. So again, this is just an example, right? Um, something, I, I actually know you. Okay, okay, you know what? I feel like a better example of this would be to actually move the part, right? So we get the player, we get the cursor ray, we get the, um, yeah, so we, yeah, we get the cursor ray, we get the, the view frame. Um, so yeah, if I say player and then we have the ray, I could just say like ray dot um, origin, sure. Origin dot. Uh, I'm not. I'll be honest, man. I'm not too sure how these um things work. Maybe maybe we get the view frame. Let's see. View dot. What do we get? Position. Okay. I mean, we could do that. So we could just say workspace dot part. Wait. Parts dot position is equal to view dot position yeah um will this work i have no idea but let's see my mouse man okay okay i see so so view frame is our view okay okay i understand now <laughs> i understand so maybe we could do something like vector 3 dot new and then we can say ray dot origin dot x ray dot origin dot y then ray dot origin dot z i'm actually not too sure if this is going to work or not but let's see bro what is going on okay 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 well yeah there we go okay fascinating i love i love drag detectors well no okay this can't be it right i mean what what else like player who dragged cursor ray how do you know okay wait Cur okay wait it gives you the cursor ray right so it gives you the ray view frame c frame are you meant to make like a ray cast out of the ray, you probably okay. You know what? You're probably meant to make a ray cast. Okay, so yeah, I guess you could make a a ray cast. Okay, it doesn't matter. But again, that's kind of the idea behind the video. Okay, so drag detectors run locally. You can make your own drags. You can make it not even a, not even drag. You can just have a system where, like, the, when the player performs the action of dragging, something else happens, right? Like maybe they're dra they're going to be dragging like some switch or some I don't know some color wheel or something like that, right? So if you need custom drag properties, drag detector, run locally, it literally just gives you built-in events. So that's very helpful. And yeah, we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.